tink again. There we are. Lovely to be back with you all. And dinky do, you're watching Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. Dinky do, I say. It was fine then, boom, says Tony Richardson. Yes, this is what happens, Tony, but these are technical things, right? Uh, Scotty, do the agency staff have zero-hour contracts in the NHS? Do they get the pay rise? Just asking. Uh, Sandy, I would think all workers get the pay rise just because you've got a zero-hour contract, right, which is a very clever political austerity right-wing thing to do very non-union, all that sort of idea. But just because you've got a zero-hours contract doesn't mean you won't get the rate. So I would hope that they would get the rate rise. I don't know for sure. I would need to look into it. I would need to check it out. But I would hope they would get the rate rise. Why should they not? So there you are. I mean, just because you're on a zero-hours contract doesn't mean that you are a, a lesser person. So there we are. So we need to look into all that. But maybe somebody can come on and tell us if anybody's watching who's senior in the NHS and knows what they are talking about with the pay rise. Do people on zero hours contract like carers and uh, freelance staff, will they get the pay rise? I would assume so. Uh, good evening, Scotty, says Mary Allen. Dinky do, Mary. Lovely to have you with us. Excellent. And a warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. Thanks to every single one of you for all the sharing, all the joining in, all the argy-bargy, all the discussion. Scotty McClue speaks for the people of Scotland and wishing Her Majesty the Queen a very happy official birthday. Happy birthday, Mum. And Prince Philip, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, a happy, um, not official birthday, his actual birthday. There you are, he's 97 today, the Duke of Edinburgh, and we give thanks for his life and his work. And I speak for everyone when I say that, so don't start your objections. Good evening, Scotty, says Mary Allen, Dinky Do, David Hennessy is watching, Michael McGuigan, Richard McCuster, and Stevie McKenzie. Uh, so, yes, I would imagine they do, Sandy, so I would hope they would get that. Now, tonight, we have a lot to discuss, folks, so I hope you'll get onto your devices as quickly as possible dinky do again scotty did you watch the 2018 tripping of the color i never miss it david hennessy rum diddle dee dum da rum dum diddle dee dee very very good excellent stuff tripping the color i can remember her majesty the queen a uh, riding side saddle on burmese beautiful black horse burmese and uh, her majesty the queen used to take the salute on burmese and Prince Philip rode along beside her. Prince Charles rode along beside her. The whole family were on horseback. Tremendous. Say hi to the wife, Tracy, says James Adamson. Tracy Adamson, dinky do. Hello, Scotty Nator, says James Ridley. James Ridley, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Marvellous stuff tonight. Dinky do again. So there we go. Now, I've got two devices running. Uh, so I don't know which one you're actually watching. Can I have lots of thumbs up and hearts and tickety woos and dinky doos? First class, wonderful. Uh, tonight on the show, we're discussing what kind of punishment should we give the people that uh, attacked the 100-year-old lady and the 90-year-old lady and savagely beat them? What sort of punishment? What kind of world are we living in when a human being can do that to another human being? So there you are. Thomas Hamilton, dinky do. Thank you very much. Scotty, I have a little trivial question for you. Do you know who the people are who stand at that stand around the speaker in the House of Commons? They'll be the clerks, I think. The clerks to the House of Commons. There's a whole separate staff in the House of Commons run by Black Rod who's usually um, a retired senior military officer, maybe a major general or something like that in, uh, in the army. And uh, they, they sit in as black rod and uh, take charge of the house. But the speaker is your person. John, we've had some wonderful, wonderful speakers. I mean, John Berko, great speaker, of course, very, very good on protocol and, uh, and what have you. And uh, Betty Boothroyd, do you remember Betty Boothroyd? She'd been a dancer. In her, in her younger days, and uh, the wonderful George Thomas, yes, Lord Tony Pandy, who once said, um, 
if you repeat that, I'll have to name you. I'll name you. I'll name you. And then he said, right, right, I'm going to name you. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. So there you are. Uh, no, they are not the representatives of the City of London, says Bodie Conley. Is that right, Bodie? Very, very interesting. So you know more about it than me. Uh, I'm pretty good in procedure and protocol, but you know more about that than me. Uh, hi, Scotty. Long-time listener. Don't always agree with you, but do you think we have the right to criticise Islam? Um, it depends. Uh, why would you want to criticize Islam. That's the thing. If you're criticizing somebody who happens to be Islamic, who's done something wrong or against the law, then that's a different thing. But why would you want to criticize an actual one of the world's great religions? They will be an illegally allowed to put a stop on policy, which is a direct effect on the city of London. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, am I right in thinking that Mrs. Thatcher got herself into a little bit of hot water um, over something like that? Scotty, I saw a man in the graveyard carrying a coffin. I asked him if it was okay. It all made lost the plot. Oh, very, very good. Thank you, Robert Patterson. Uh, missing you on the radio, big guy, says Buddy. And you too, Buddy. Lovely to hear from you. Scotty, do we need more police officers in the street? Many people think they rarely ever see police officers walking around. Well, you don't. When I was young, all the time, late at night, policemen walking about in twos, trying shop doors, big rubber torches, you know, and they stopped people in the street, checked where they were going, what they were doing. But it was a different day, you see, because the whole world closed down for the night. The pubs shut at 10 o'clock. You know, we were diverted off the motorway one day, and I looked up one of the main streets in Glasgow. And it was absolutely alive at three o'clock in the morning. I'd been driving back from doing a show in Edinburgh. Absolutely jumping the place was. So there you are. Um, to have the right to and not be persecuted. Yes. Yes, you're correct, says Body Conley. She did. Aha. The Queen must send written requests to enter the city of London. And now to the mayor of the city, as it is a principality. Yes, we see that on the signs, don't you, city of London. So there you are, as opposed to City of Westminster. Is that right? Have I got that correct? So there we go. Um, what else is happening over here? We're very, very busy on both devices, guys. I don't know what you're seeing or what's actually going on, but we're busy on both devices. Hey, hey, says Chris Kelly. Hi, Scott. He says Robert White. Welcome back, says Steve Burrows. Dinky do, Steve. Lovely to have you with us. Um, Scotty, there's not enough seats for MPs to get a seat. Uh, I know because I was there on Wednesday. That's why they stand. You have to book your seat. Oh, I think. What about manners? Does, does nobody say, for instance, if old McClue was an MP, would nobody say, Scotty, you, you sit down. I'll stand. Some of the younger ones, you know. Uh, I'm here by accident. Make that 11, says Martin Ward. Dinky do, Martin. Well, we've got 2 at 16. Now, what happens, Martin? You obviously don't understand social media. These numbers all go up and up and up and up. And I think last week we had about 12,000 people actually saw the show. So there you are. Go on. You'll see the little numbers at the bottom. Uh, nobody joins Scotty McLean by accident. You've been guided by a higher power, I would say, to come and join in the show. I'm on the hips. There you are. Scotty, you're a marvel. I really enjoy the show, buddy. Lovely to have you with us, of course. And dinky do. Sorry about this. I'm looking at two devices here. Perhaps we should concentrate on one. That's what I think. There we are. Hi, Scotty. I'm watching in uh, watching in Miami. Buenas noches. Buenas noches to Miami as well. Scotty McClure is global. Tell us where you're watching throughout the world. If you're watching in Europe or in Ireland or in India or Africa, Canada, America, uh, Madagascar, Tasmania, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Australia, New Zealand, Russia, China, Japan, you let us know. Indonesia, only Dennis Skinner has guaranteed his seats as Sandy Howden. So he should be, Sandy. What a great guy. I'm a great fan of Dennis Skinner. And there you are. And um, I remember um, Tony Benn's mother used to stay at the back of my father's shop. So there you are. Very, very interesting. Tony Ben's mother. And I met Tony Ben, of course. Lovely, lovely guy. Uh, so there we are. We, we met at a May Day rally 
in Yorkshire, all the brass bands, and we were in the park in Barnsley. Somebody from Barnsley will come on and remind me of the name of the park again. We're at the park in Barnsley. So there we go. Lovely to have you with us. I'm missing people. Hi, Scotty. How are you, my friend? Alex Dean Moon and you're on. Dinky Doo says Wadge has joined us. Good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well. So Stephen Menzies. Um, I like your tie, pal, says Thomas Hamilton. Thank you, Thomas. I thought I'd smart myself up. I used to get a white shirt on, but I went for the silver tonight. I like your comment on Islam. We should take each person on their own merit. We have knife and gun crime and old ladies being beaten silly in their beds, good and bad, in every race or creed. Absolutely, Carol McFarlane, you're quite right. And why have people got a right to criticise the world's great religions? Judaism, Christianity, and you've got to remember that uh, Catholics and Protestants are part of the same religion. They're not a different religion. It amazes me when people say, ah, but they're of a different religion. They're not. So there you are. Um, Mr. McClue, that's me checking in. Good evening to your good self. This is Douglas McPherson or McPherson, but I'm going to call him McPherson. Marvellous. Brilliant as usual, Scotty. We'll get our photo taken together one day. Absolutely. I used to get invited for tea on the terrace at the House of Commons. That's where you were the other day, Sandy, judging by the picture. You were on the terrace. At the front of the house of at um, well, I suppose at the back of the House of Commons, really overlooking the river there. Tea in the terrace. Uh, marvellous, marvellous stuff. Um, did you see uh, that uh, we're good to uh, Labour are going to have another go at things? I think in Scotland Labour should really back independence and apologize for betraying the people of Scotland. That's why they ended up in the wilderness. Shocking. There you are. If I'm looking away, guys, I'm looking at one of the other devices here. Uh, Billy Connell's watching Dinky Doo, John Paul Waterflow, come on, Gus McPhee, lovely to have you with us, Scotty McCrew. Tonight we're talking about the um, two old ladies that were uh, savagely beaten by thugs, 190 and one over 100. So there you are, shocking. I say, what is this country coming to and what sort of punishment should these people have for doing that? Uh, I love listening to debates, says Carol McFarland. Well, Carol, we like a good debate. What we're going to try and do is get people interacting, uh, not just on Facebook. I'm, I can't really be bothered with all this typing stuff. To me, it's just, it holds things up. We should be talking live, face to face. And uh, one of my great wishes is that one of the big television companies, perhaps the BBC, gives Scotty McClure a slot, say on a Friday night between 11 and 11.30 or something like that, and we go live and talk to the people. So there we are. <clears throat> Brian Morrison, I can't actually talk about that. So there you are. Sorry about that, but that's that, I'm afraid. Uh, the law is the law, so we can't discuss that. Um, I'm sure it'd be a very interesting subject for discussion, Brian, but as I say, I can't discuss it. Uh, ah, I've got pork for dinner, Scotty. It's not very good. Six pounds with veg and coffee. Very, very nice. So there you are. No, you're very lucky you got anything, Sandy. I don't think you should be moaning and whinging. You look great. I think you should become an MP. Uh, what about uh, what about joining the old National Party there? That would be tremendous. Right, there we go. Now, I'm just going to do this. Now, it's time for a share, folks. In fact, we're way, way overdue with our share. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Right, very important that you share. Uh, we're too soft in this country. Hang them, says Gary Clausen. As I say, Gary, uh, those of you who missed it at the start, I really was very, very tempted to say, yes, bring back the rope for these people. It's a dreadful thing to have to do to another person's life. But, uh, you know, that's what they deserve. And perhaps amputation for thieves. If somebody takes money off you, uh, you know, a guy once took some money off me, and you think, amputation you know and then they can't do it so there we are done it pal says thomas hamilton hi from south queens ferry says jason connolly jason connolly dinky do lovely to hear from you again you're watching scotty McClure. catherine murray nice to see you scotty nice to see you too catherine bless you i say welcome to the program tremendous stuff now can we share folks i can't actually share tonight because my devices are all in use ah no wait a minute Perhaps I'm not coming out with the facts. I could maybe manage a bit of sharing here. Did you see the um, roses, the June roses at McClue Towers? They are very nice. 
little bit of comfort right here. Hold on a second. Do not go away. Oh, my goodness me. So there you are. I'm just uh, giving myself uh, a quick uh, a quick mop down, as they say. Very important. A quick mop down. Right, let's see if we can get some shading going here. I've got another device here, and we might manage to do a little bit of shading on that. That would be rather good. So let's just see what is what here. Uh, if we can do that, that would be first class. Marvellous stuff, I see. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. But it's a bit askew there. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. We're live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. People listening all over the world. Catherine Murray, the sapper, remember him? Yes, Catherine, yes, lovely, lovely. Uh, is sapper, uh, well, tell me what's going on. You'll have to keep me up to date with the news. So there you are, and let me know what's what. No ropes, Scotty. So there we are. The SNP are going soft in prison. Stop putting the ordinary man in jail for debt. Stop finding people with no money. Well, that's what I'm saying. We've got the uh, non-habit, Sandy. And you should know about that. Man cannot give what he does not have. In Latin, non-habit. So there you are. That's you uh, up to date with that. So look at the non-habit. In other words, you can't take the breach of healing men. That's uh, basically what it means. So there we go. I'm just seeing if I can do a bit of sharing here, guys. So you can do the same. Uh, get sorted out. We're a bit behind with our sharing, and we have to do that. Marvellous stuff. Right. I'll just share that. There we go. Excellent stuff. And uh, I'll let everybody know I was going live. So we've shared that. And what I'll do, I'll just post now and say live now. All right. Can you all share, guys? Share the broadcast as we speak. Very, very important. Let everybody know what's going on. Share now. Do you think Boris Johnson should be in office? If not, what job would you give him? Very interesting what's happening with Boris. Boris office is getting a very hard time. And stuff got overheard at a, a dinner. Um, I think they're running a bit scared of Brexit. I would actually chuck Brexit. I would stop it. I would go to Europe and say to Mr. Barnier and uh, Mr. Tusk and um, Angela Merkel and say to them, listen, guys, look, we've made a wee bit of a pig's ear of all this. Would you mind if we rescinded Article 50 as soon as possible? We'll all get back round the big table because it would suddenly give Mrs. May massive, massive negotiating power. We're staying in the customs union, blah, blah, blah. Also, there's talk of Ireland uniting. So there we are. And it's very, very big. I'm serious about it. Uh, Carol McFarlane, less PC and more old-fashioned teaching of manners, respect and discipline. It's all I want, I must have, or will cause havoc till I get it. People don't c take control of the kids. They're almost feral. Well, this is the big worry, isn't it? We don't want feral children running about the town and city centres. Mr McClue, I have a bonnet for work. It's a powerful article of clothing. Nobody, and I mean nobody, creates trouble. For a man with a bonnet. Well, that's it. I mean, touch wood, I say, you know, or touch cloth. I'll go under touch wood here. Um, you know, I don't I don't put up with any nonsense of folk with a, you know, I'll tell you that. Uh, so there you are. Uh, Deej Maximus has joined us. Dinky doo, DJ Maximus. Stuart McKenna's watching. Lovely to have you with us. Come and join us, folks. I want to hear your opinion. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are exceptionally busy. And we're live on the big one. Facebook Live, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. Share and share and share and share and share and share and share this show with all your groups and with everybody else. Some young guy stole the wages from the Weaver's Factory in East Weems, says James Adamson. Well, there you are. Uh, I've no doubt that will get sorted out. Uh, so there you are. So um, what is it you say? You keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So I think Mrs. May is just keeping a, um, Boris as close as possible at the moment. Um, people don't teach their children manners and respect. The prison's will, says Debbie Safford Thomas. Yes, I think people don't understand what being incarcerated is like. Now, I'm getting conflicting reports. A lot of prisoners used to write to me all the time. And uh, I've added a pipe to the management are speechless, says uh, Douglas McPherson. Uh, so there you are. What wonderful stuff. Hi, Scotty. A shout out to John in Bury, please. John P. Hazelton. 
in Bury down in Manchester. Remember going to open the Bury market. Come out away with two lovely black puddings. And what they do down there is they boil the puddings. How do you cook your black pudding? And how do you eat it? Do let me know. So there we are. Scotty, it was the EU's intransigence on the reforms we asked for which caused the referendum. Yes, but I mean, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, the real separatists are the Brexiteers, Sandy. And uh, they are the separatists. They are going to break up Britain. And uh, North and South Ireland may join up. Scotland will definitely go independent. And uh, that leaves little England uh, round about Watford, I would say. So that's what could happen there. Marvellous stuff. The wonderful God and Roddick watching. Dinky do to you, sir. Lovely to know you are there. You are a pillar of great reassurance for all Scottish broadcasters. Um, so that's that. Mark Finlay's joined us. Dinky do, Mark. Lovely to have you with us, of course. Excellent stuff. We're getting some very big names in tonight, guys. The last time someone was hanged, 1909, at Perth Prison. <coughs> Was there not one later than that? What about uh, Ruth Ellis? When was when was that? Was that not 19, 1950? Yes, I think those hangings later than that. And what about uh, what about Christie from Rillington Place? No, no, I don't think I think nineteen oh nine. Is that in Scotland, James? Is that what you're telling me? The last time somebody was hanged in Scotland was nineteen nine. So there we are. I remember when I I just gone down to Red Rose Radio in Lancashire when I got the news that Albert Pierpoint, the last hangman, had died. He he rang, he ran a pub in Southport in Lancashire, and uh, Albert just passed away. And what he used to do, he smoked a cigar at the time of the hanging, and he was as humane as one could possibly be. He would uh, nip into the cell and say, don't worry, old fellow, we'll soon have your way. Uh, pop the rope on, the hood, the rope, bang, that was that. And then he he actually got fined a shilling, I think, for murder, 5p for uh, for murder, for manslaughter. It wouldn't be for murder, but for manslaughter. And he had to pay the shilling <coughs> back, and then he got paid for the hanging. So there you are. As far as I understand it, whatever punishment they get, it's got to be a life for a life, says Steve Burroughs. Well, as Mahatma Gandhi, who was really a very, very, very wonderful man, and of course, he got assassinated. It happens to all these wonderful people enlightened about the world. John F. Kennedy, uh, Indira Gandhi, Mr. Nehru's daughter. You know, assassination. Shocking, shocking, shocking stuff. Uh, so there you are. But he said, if you took an eye for an eye, the whole world would be blind. Uh, there's a few management chaps could do with a hanging. And not with an neck, says Douglas McPherson. So there you are. I used to worry about... And people said they'd been picked up by the fuzz or hung by the Cherokees. So there you are. And last hanging in the UK was 1964, Scotty. I thought so, Dave. Yes, absolutely. 1964, that makes sense. And then it was banned in 1965. It was a Labour MP, wasn't it, that really stood out to ban hanging. Uh, so there you are. Um, but uh, yes, I see where you come from. Lisa Wallace has joined us. Hi, Lisa. Dinky do. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. Dinky do. Um, I think more than 15 years in prison might make murderers think they don't get enough punishment. So there you are. Well, that is a thought. Hello, hello, Scotty from the Taxi Owners Association in East Kilbride. From James and Lindsay. James and Lindsay. Dinky do. I've got two devices running tonight. Guys, can you hear me and see me? Okay, is everything loud and clear? So there we are, 1964. Uh, Scott Wells, Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue. And guys, can every single one of you spread the word and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live just for you, Dinky Doo. We're also looking at uh, streaming live on YouTube. So there you are. But I think uh, I can't do it on the old, um, the old Marshmallow, the Android Marshmallow at the moment. Does anybody know when that's going to change? Does anybody know? When Android Marshmallow will allow streaming live on YouTube. Hello, Scotty, says Scott Wells. Dinky do. All cool, sounding great, says James Bauer. I thank you, James Bauer. You are very, very kind indeed. Very much appreciated. Uh, 
Don't you think most politicians should be hung, Scotty, says Mark Finley. Bit harsh, bit savage there, Mark. No, no. What I would say about politicians, though, if they're caught telling an out-and-out -out lie, as actually happened round a lot of the Leave campaign for Brexit, there was a lot of people misconstruing the truth there. No names, no pack drill. They know who they are. But what I would say there is I think they should definitely lose their job if somebody said, no, you've misled not just Parliament, you've misled the country, you have to go now. That's a very serious offence, a very big misdemeanor. And the miscreants have to go. Yes, pal, can hear you and see you, says Thomas Hamilton. Thank you, Thomas. Scotty, you still have the wizard and the toilet music, says John P. Hazelton. I've got the toilet music, and funnily enough, I was thinking when we used to whip the wizard if he got names wrong. Do you remember that, John? So there you are. That was uh, that was the days. And I think we need to get back to that. I had a half-witted idiot today going, nobody wants you as a presenter because it's the same patter. Yes, that'll be why we get the uh, the two million audiences worldwide. Yes, very good. Yes, yeah, good for him. Everybody knows a bit more about your profession than yourself. Do you not find that amazing? Right, Mr. McClure, do you think we'll win independence this time, says Douglas McPherson? I do, Douglas. Some people have been saying it's as high as 72% for independence. And if you look what happened to the Labour Party in Scotland when, uh, when the people were misled and, in fact, betrayed, I would say, by senior politicians and false promises. And they were just kicked into touch. They are in the wilderness now, wandering about in the political wilderness. And I don't think, unless Labour back independence, they'll, uh, they'll get out of jail free. I really don't. So there you are. Um, hanging is harsh, but held to rights. More independent tribunals for MPs, I would say. Well, you know, MPs have got these select committees where they call people in, big business people, and get them in to apologize and to explain themselves for something that's gone wrong with their business. And the public have been uh, harmed in some way by their misdemeanors. And what I think is, what about if the public have got a select committee that they can uh, hold MPs to account? So you could be put on... I don't have a, a, a quango, as they were called, and that's uh, a bit Thatcherite, but in actual fact, a quango, a public quango, where MPs are held to account. It's just a thought. Um, so there you go. Like uh, all McLuhan stuff's a thought. Anyone on the Isle of Skye, Friday the 22nd of June, Raintown in concert. We have a third year music student supporting us from Portree High School. Come along and enjoy the show, says James Bauer. How fabulous. James. Yes, the wizard was often naughty. Great days, great times of John P. Hazelton. I think they'll come back, John. Um, I can't say too much, and I know people say it's been going on a long time, but I'm in uh, discussion, I won't say negotiations, discussion with very, very senior people in the in the British media, the UK media, about that Scotty McClue should definitely come back. And I think Scotty McClue should be allowed on the BBC. So if there's any senior decision makers watching from the BBC. Think about having Scotty McClue and uh, that will put your commercial stations into meltdown. So there you are. That'll stop you worrying about uh, the commercial stations being far more interesting than the BBC. Put Scotty McClue on. Whoever has McClue has the market. So there we are. We'll get your big audiences. Uh, now then, who have we got here? Stop it, Scotty. The white paper was a fraud, says Sandy Howden. Which particular white paper are you talking about, Sandy? So there you are. You just come out with these statements and you don't give us any details. So we're supposed to be mind readers with you, Sandy. So there we are. Scott, is it not time that Ruth Davidson did something about the bigotry and racism in a party? Another story out tonight. I was thinking about the Tories in Scotland, Alan Cadden, and although the mainstream media give them... Uh, time that's disproportionate with the size of the party in Scotland. Really what the Tories in Scotland say is uh, is neither here nor there. Nobody really says ichy or ochy about it. So there we are. They've got their head office in London and I'm sure Mrs May would love to get into Scotland in a big way with the Tories but it's certainly not happening at the moment. I predicted this 20 years ago. I said the Tories would come back 
uh, meaning the mainstream, and I was, I was uh, arguing on air with a guy called Willie. You'll get it on YouTube. Scotty McClure talks to Willie, and I was saying to him, the Tories will come back, but not in Scotland. I can't see it happening in Scotland. Scotty, they won't let um, independent supporters on the BBC, says Alan Cadden. Yeah, but I'm apolitical. I'm not a political person, Alan. I mean, I think Scotland would do very well independent, but that's not political. That's economically. Uh, you know, I, I think of things like the Macron report, Professor Macron, um, wonderful, wonderful economist, so there you are. And um, I think of things like that. <laughs> and I think, no, no, Scotland actually should be keeping its own money because Thatcher asset stripped it. So either they give Scotland that money back and say, look, we've got billions coming back to you, Scotland, so don't worry, or Scotland goes independent. There you are. Um, I lived in the USA for two good years. I saw patriotism and flags in every house. I want that for my country. My country is Scotland, not Britain. Well, it can't be Britain. Your country cannot possibly ever be Britain because there is no such country as Britain, right? Britain is an amalgam of four countries. It used to be three, it's four now, right, since 1922 when they annexed the six counties of Ireland, of Ulster, which is eight counties, and they, they annexed six of them. And um, you've got um, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. So there you are. I mean, uh, Britain used to think it had a claim to the whole of Ireland, but Northern Ireland now, and Wales, and there's a lot of serious talk about Ireland reunifying. Uh, so there we are. Um, very, very interesting. Chris Johnson's joined us. Uh, so there you are. So Alan Cadden, in answer to that, the BBC have absolutely no reason not to have Scotty McClure. I've never put a foot wrong in 26 years. And um, I remember going to see the BBC and they were delighted. They were very, very excited about Scotty McClure joining them. And then somebody upstairs had kiboshed it because um, probably they were worried about their job. No reason to be. No harm in McClure. All we do is proper serious debate. We don't suffer fools gladly. And um, there it goes. And we have a laugh. We do information, education and entertainment. It's well proven. And we bring in uh, massive, massive audiences and serious money if it's a commercial organization. When you think over the years, I've presided over things that have changed hands for uh, about £200 million in total. Interesting, isn't it? Um, Sandy Howes, what's he on about? The 2014 Indie paper. You know what was about? Sandy, this is nothing to do with it, right? When you're looking at independence, you don't go looking at the tiny money, the cost. I mean, Nicola was being asked the other day, very prematurely by a journalist, a television journalist, what would the cost be? And they were talking around £450 million. Pounds. That's not even one month's levy to Westminster from Scotland. So there you are. So it would all be cleared in a month, four weeks. So there you go. So you have Independence Sandy, four weeks, all sorted, all paid for, done and dusted. All right. So let's be telling the truth. Seven minutes left, Scotty. Oh no, Thomas. And we haven't had a tune at all tonight. Would you like a tune? How would you like um, a wee uh, hymn? <laughs> I know these people say, I know these people say they, they go, oh yes, uh, oh yes, Scotland's not religious anymore. That's all gone. But that's maybe because we don't, I think I'll have a wee drink of water if everybody's up for that. Mm. Oh, that is lush. Guys, can we have some serious sharing? Share, 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 share. Independence is work in progress. Have you noticed, though, it's very interesting, there's been a massive sea change within the last few weeks, and the establishment are coming round to the fact that Scotland uh, will be independent, but we must bring the crown with us and have the crown on board. So stop your nasty low-life comments about uh, the crown and the royal family and things like that. Just stop it, folks, because you're damaging the independence campaign beyond belief. All right. Do you think Ireland uh, deal could work? A lot of water's gone under the bridge over the years there. A recent poll in Northern Ireland actually swung for the two parts to unite. 
with the EU. Yeah, absolutely, Dave Harley. Things change. The water under the bridge has changed. The sort of hardened Ulster person that uh, Edward VIII told Prince Charles about when they met the two Prince of Wales meeting. Uh, you know, very, very interesting. And um, Edward VIII, uh, the Duke of Windsor, and he said to Prince Charles, yes, the hardened Ulster people, that's the problems, because the king was involved in the 1920s and 1930s, of course. And also Lloyd George was the Prime Minister, if I remember right, at the time of the Easter Risings. Good luck to Run Rig on their final tour of Europe after 40 years plus. These guys, musically, have put our beautiful country on the map. Good night, pal. Have a good week. See you next Sunday. Fantastic, guys. Get sharing. Would you like a tune on the pipe organ? I've just had an idea for a tune. Just when you mentioned a certain group there. So there we are. Right, I'll move this over for you, if you like. Another great show, Scott is and Steve Burroughs. Dinky do, Steve. That's fantastic. Are we ready? Previous week, and I mean, yes, the Royals are important to Scots independence. I'm on board with you now with the idea. Thank you, Douglas McPherson. You've got to remember, Scotty McClure might be the world's most humble man, but I am a visionary. I am the world's top broadcaster. I am the first lord of the internet. I do hold the record for 460,000 calls to a radio station in one week. These are the figures the BBC should be looking at. All right. Uh, Loch Lomond, says James Murray. Yes, indeed, very much. So everybody in the independence movement, drop your prejudices because your prejudices are very, very ill-founded. And start to take on board that we need the crown with us for independence. Otherwise, it will not happen. Remember, the, the Scottish crown is uh, united with the English crown, right? And the crown is the symbol of authority in this country. So for independence, you will need royal assent. The independence bill can only become an act if it has royal assent. Why should the Queen sign that if she's not getting a fair deal? Okay, have you got all that, guys? Just about to watch a repeat of the show, says Ben Lucas. Ben Lucas, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Lovely to have you all with us. Unfortunately, I think we're just about at the end of the show, and we have to dash off another couple of minutes. So uh, you'll see what's going on there. Another great show, Scotty Dinky do. I say to all of you, and um, does anybody know what Sandy's on about? Always good. To know what Sandy's on about. Marvellous stuff. Willie Cameron's just joined us. Hello, he says. Hello. Now, remember, you can see the show during the week live here on Facebook, on the Facebook page. And also, uh, you'll get it uploaded to YouTube. Very, very important. This is show number 95. Right? I remember somebody saying, it seems to be yesterday, since we clicked the icon and actually went live on um, Facebook Live. How marvellous is that? We'll probably end up streaming on YouTube as well, guys. It's work in progress, and it's all happening. There's talk about going back on the radio. There's talk about television shows. So you will be he hearing and seeing much, much more of Scotty McClue. I can tell you that for nothing. David Niggis is with us, a fine fellow as well. We're going to have to dash, David. You're just in time, I think. Right, folks, thank you so much for being with me. It's been a lovely, lovely show. Lovely being with you this week. So much to talk about, so little time to do it in, as always. And I'll see you all next week at the same time, 9 o'clock sharp. God willing, weather permitting, dinky do. See you next week. Have a great night, Scotty. Have a lovely week, guys. I'm going to sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. 
Good by everybody of Wietersein. Au revoir and a cheery o. I'll play you out. Are we ready? everybody, I'm off. Ta-da! Scotty McClure has left the building. Now, I'll probably be around here because this doesn't like actually being put off. It doesn't mind cutting itself off, but it does not like being put off. Ding.